Hello and welcome. Arthur Yusuf Tijani here once again for my Mission My Vision talk show. Very interestingly, today I have with me a very prominent figure in our society uh, to join me to discuss some essential areas of self-development and entrepreneurship. And we'll be doing it in accordance with some of the uh, important elements discussed in my mission, my vision, with doctor's personal experience. And I believe you are going to enjoy it seriously. Trust me. All right, so um, <clears throat> let me quickly welcome our doctor. Uh, Dr. Mohammed Sani Saeed is a well-known alternative medicine practitioner. Practitioner. He is currently the managing and consulting homeopath at the Kumasi branch of Endpoint Homeopathic Clinic. He has numerous qualifications, which time will only allow me to mention but a few. He's, he has Masters of bachelor's, uh, Business Administration. He has Masters of Business Administration, Master of Philosophy. He has Diploma in Magnet Therapy, among others. Like I said, I cannot mention all his qualifications. He has altered about two books now to help um, in his field of experience as well as the religion, the Islamic faith. Yes, help me welcome this prominent figure who is doing so well to help us, a doctor and a businessman. Doctor, you're welcome. Thank you very much. I'm happy to be with you. All right. So, um, audience, thank you for joining us. We will proceed with doctor to get more of you know his experience to help our daily you know upbringing all right so um doc let me first of all ask what motivated you to become a doctor as a profession instead of any other field of you know profession yes very well thank you very much um uh, events happen some by miracles some by let me see divine providence um, when I was growing up, it wasn't my intention, it wasn't my passion to become a doctor. But I would see God being so good uh, by his own desire. I happened to be a friend to a doctor. So there and then, my interest developed in the practice. So basically, that's what I have to say. And I thought I would be in a classroom, that's what I desire to do, to impart knowledge. Uh, probably in the lecture hall or any uh, other level of education. That was my desire. But nonetheless, being in the medical field also does not debar me from doing the teaching. So I think both interests can be combined properly. Once I diagnose individuals, Ghanaians who are uh, not well, you know, who are sick, uh, I impart some knowledge at the same time vis-a-vis you know, -vis what diet they should take to eat well, how to live uh, uh, normally, how to live in harmony with people in society, how to maintain hygiene, protect the environment, and so on and so forth. So I see the skill and the passion both uh, going hand in hand. So although I have deviated not teaching in the classroom uh, to earn income, but the desire to teach is still on, and I'm still doing it as I uh, attend to the sick of course yes um i think it's interesting because i can see that you are doing so well in that because even looking at your current books that you published i think one in your field of you know homeopathy That's and right. then that is uh, quite ed informative and educative and then also you have published recently a book on on, on the in, in the islamic religion which is a journey the final journey or uh, the title i think i even have the book here yeah provisions galore for the journey of no return. Right. Very, very interesting. I think this book, and then uh, amazingly, uh, you, you said this book is for charity. Wow. And uh, that is so, just the passion, because I think uh, knowledge should be shared freely. Yeah. Knowledge should be shared freely with all things being possible. So if you're able to share knowledge freely, I think the results or the reward you will get is higher than if you are selling it. And uh, therefore, I think I'm able 
uh, to provide the book uh, free of charge and seeking uh, the pleasure or reward from uh, nobody else but the Almighty. And based on what is in the book, I think uh, we in the community of faith, we believe that this world is not our final abode. And whatever it is, we have to depart uh, sooner or later. And that is important that we prepare in advance for our journey, that when we go, we are not coming back. So all the message in it is just towards that, how to live in this world in harmony, and then get the best that you could, also not forgetting that one day, one day, you have to leave the world. So you have to prepare for that as well. Wow. That's interesting. I must commend you on that. In fact, you're doing so well. So um, let's come to the self-development. Before we, we, we discuss anything, I, I think you've read My Mission, My Vision Very well. as a book, and then you know the theme, the, the reason why the book exists. So can you tell us, in a nutshell, a bit of you know, your experience with the book? Very well. Um, what attracted my attention most, um, uh, for not belittling the rest, is your assertion or the, the input you captured in the book that in order to succeed, uh, we may disagree as to what success means, but what all of us will not want is that as a man or a young person growing, you get up, you have no money to buy food, you have no money to pay your rent, or if you're married, you have no money to pay your key school fees here and there. Nobody wants that. Perhaps we may disagree as to what success means. Some may see success as having a lot of wealth, uh, some may see success as being famous, and so on and so forth. But these things none of us want. And if you have to break from that chain where you don't want to see yourself wanting, unable to pay for your medical bills, for example, if you are sick, you have to break away from what you call uh, the past tradition or the unwelcome tradition, that is break away from a system, system that is not good. Of course, if you have to look around, today, um, I had a scholar mentioning that he went somewhere to present his copy of a book he has authored on self-development, just like yours, to a group of students. These are students who are studying. And then he volunteered to give somebody a book, or let me say 50 Naira. Overwhelming, 95% of the students opted to take the money wow. instead of the book. That is to say that the system we have today is such that it's not development oriented. It is against uh, all progress uh, in that you have a youth or uh, teaming young persons growing who would probably just want to go to school, acquire some certificate, go and apply for government jobs, but forget to develop themselves. Uh, you also mentioned that each and every one of us has some talent that he can develop. And you are promoting that, of course. You highlighted that in your book, that each and every one of us has some talent that we can turn into value. And when society wants that value, they will exchange that with money. So the way to go is really to discover your talent and then use that talent to uh, batter for what society also wants uh, from you. So in that case, you give the value you have or the talent you have, and the society will give you money in return. However, if you make acquisition of the money, the target, which unfortunately we have, uh, the overwhelming uh, team you've grown up today are looking up to do. We want quick success, quick wealth, and then we don't want to really uh, develop ourselves, take time to build our talent, steady, acquire some skills, sharpen the skills, hone our skills, and then exchange uh, that skill with money. Uh, so the quick money syndrome is really um, hindering our development. And therefore, if you have to succeed or be able uh, to do what you want to do, uh, be able to acquire the things you want to acquire without going under any difficulty, you have to break away from a system. The system is the quick money syndrome where we all go to acquire some tickets waiting to look for a job. Wow. So this system is really what we have to break away of. And there's an author who said that if you want to fly like an eagle in the sky, you don't have to play around with the chickens because the chickens will be 
on the floor. Wow. The chickens cannot fly. Mm -hmm. We're hanging around. So if you want to soar in the sky like an eagle, you really have to break away with the system. And the system is what is unproductive in society. Of course. Well, well um, um, tackled. I think um, <clears throat> we are getting somewhere. You just mentioned something from uh, the book that breaking away from the system. I think in that line, there are some interesting lines to, according to uh, some of our readers. That's right. I think they want to know more. Mm -hmm. and, and you being an experienced person in the, in the society, I think uh, we may learn something from you. That's right. So you see, the third point mentioned, you know, after breaking away from the system, there's another point that says, um, try to do it your own way. Well, I think which you, you said it in well, your explanation. Well, well. Then the third one that says, cut off the television and media for well, a while. Well, well. In your own experience, let me ask, uh, as you are growing to become who you are today, as people can look up to you as a role model, mm. how was your relation with television and media and stuff like that? Well, thank you for this question. Uh, let me see, fortunately or unfortunately, when I was growing up in the community I grew up, uh, there were only about three televisions in the whole community, and those were black and white televisions, and we go there to watch only on Sundays. Wow. When you have to go and watch a kind of drama, and I tell you, you have to carry your own stool to that part, uh, place to watch. I think the chief of the community and two other uh, wealthy individuals. So it wasn't really available. If you didn't want to watch, it wasn't that available. Wow. So we were fortunate to stick to our books, and our teachers then, not today, were really forceful. Although we had to study with lantern sometimes. And the lantern is in the kitchen, it's in the bedroom, it's the same lantern you have to study with. So our time with television really wasn't uh, so frequent or so widespread like it is today. And secondly, the programs on television then were really educating programs. Wow. Uh, some time packs on that, uh, that uh, if I have to refer to those times, there were programs we were not interested in when we were growing up children. That is talking point. Mm -hmm. Talking point of DTV, yeah. famous. Yeah, I, remember. I think it delays our time for watching the drama. Of course. Unfortunately, after growing, we go to do that. I now would not want to watch that program, rather, I would like to watch the watching point. Wow. How time changes. So, my time with television then and the young persons growing then uh, were not so much like today. Beside the television programs, then were really educative and they did help, unlike it is today. Wow. In fact, I would say there are some programs on television that may be educative. The educative ones, really, you can still watch. You learn a lot from the media, but there are a lot of unproductive things in the media too. So it's for the youth, my friends, to really uh, shuffle it. Pick your choices as which program you have to watch. And if you want a program you are not acquiring knowledge from it, it is really wasting your time. Rem Lily add also. Why you have to cut off the television and from the media, not necessarily all the media, but unproductive content. Exactly. Because the time you use in uh, the time you use watching these programs that are unproductive is really your life. If you have to quantify what we mean by life, is the minutes and the seconds and the the weeks. So the hours are really life. If you have to say somebody lived 10, 20, 50, or 60 years, it is time really we are talking about. So you have to waste 10 minutes of that pressure of life, watching unproductive things. It's your life you are wasting. Oh. Some will say, uh, well, money is life or something. I say money is the most valuable thing. Mm. But it is indeed. Your life, if you have to give, if you have to die today, or you have somebody to give you an hour more, and you have to butter everything you have in terms of wealth to take care of uh, if you have to sell everything that you have to acquire life for one hour, I think you do we'll do so when we are on the bed, on the dying bed. So that life or time is life. It's really valuable. We have to know where we use our time. Mashallah. Mashallah. Well, very well. Uh, and uh, very interesting, actually. So um, now there is another point there before I even proceed, which says um, believe in yourself, even if no one does. What I felt like, you know, um, um, writing this book, actually, was that a lot of people, they lose self-confidence. Mm -hmm. okay, they don't trust what they are capable of doing. And sometimes they tend to look around and they are broken. Mm -hmm. they are, they are, their talent is broken down, their dream is broken down, and they are 
uh, stagnant. Mm. So I felt like, you know, writing something on this, believing in oneself, mm. trying to let people understand why they need to go mm. ahead after their dreams, even if people try to break them. Did you encounter some, you know, challenges while going out towards your, you know, career? Indeed, it did happen. As I told you, I was in this by, let me see, some divine accident. And the elderly friend I said, which I will call my father and my mentor, as I was going there, they were colleagues too, who, because you know, this field, you have to do several years of study, going through practicals and practicum. It takes a lot of time to really come out professional and start working. And there were colleagues who were growing up with, uh, then uh, football was in fashion and some other quick way to make money. Where I was going, there was land and there was certain, you know, you grew up in a typical Zongo. Young person will go into Sakawa, very now he's making money. And when the caribou going, as if I was wasting time. Indeed, somebody say, I've spent so much time here, what do I want? Here, here, they go to the bush to go and cut some land in the cell. And they, they have a lot of money. So why don't I stop where I'm going and wasting time? And follow them. Even with education, acquiring for my education. When we're trying to go to school, the police are see colleagues saying, I see visible book, we are going to chill. Because they say, well, a white man's job has finished. There's no book, we will not eat. They go to the bush, go and help some people, cut some land, and instant money they make. So there was that attempt to bring you down, uh, in fact, discourage you. Wow. However, I persisted. Wow. And lo and behold, the result is that today, uh, with all what they have acquired, I think I'm in a better position. Nice. If even finance is what we have to measure as what we call success than the way. So, once you have discovered your talent, indeed, if everybody will go for it, it's no more of value. Yeah. Anything that is of value, business executives and managers tell us that something that is of value is very precious and very difficult to replicate. You can't get something that is valuable if you have to achieve what you call what? competitive advantage. If you have that competitive advantage, it means you have some value that is difficult to replicate. You can't make it very easily. If it's common, everybody will say, oh, go, go, go for it. Then it's no more valuable. So the talent you have and everybody is discouraging you from, is what is of value. You have to persist. You have to persist no matter what. People will try to discourage you. That tells you that the talent you have is indeed uncommon. It's not common. It's very rare. It's very rare. So you have to persist and then carry on with your goal. Wow. In fact, this is getting interesting. I think, um, Doctor, you have shared a lot, a lot with us, and you are still sharing. I think I am actually enjoying this, though I am the author of my mission, my vision, and these, um, some of these points are already discussing it. I'm still learning a lot from your experience, uh, and I believe viewers are also uh, benefiting as well and learning a lot. But Hello. viewers, we want to take a quick commercial break and come back. Welcome back, viewers. Um, if you just joined us, we are here with um, the manager and consulting homeopath at the Kumasi branch of Endpoint Homeopathic Clinic discussing issues with regards to self-development and entrepreneurship in line with, you know, the contents of my mission, my vision book. All right. So, um, and Doc, uh, in fact, where we ended was, you know, superb. We have really learned a lot and we are eager to learn more. Okay, so um, at this point, we would like to see how one can really establish himself. You know, uh, we know we are in the academic field. Most of us, the youth, have been encouraged to go to school. And now, currently, we've heard that uh, the finance minister of our country, Ghana, is now hinting that... Uh, even the payroll 
uh, it's a bit of choked and jammed and then uh, the country might not uh, allow in more employees by the government and so they are encouraging the youth to you know establish their own businesses and stuff like that so um, in line with the contents of the book I think I some time ago discussed some of these points that I wrote in the book with some students and it was uh, quite helpful but I want you to throw more light on it on mm how to establish oneself and so some of the points that i raised i don't know you will add your experience and then you tell us more there are three steps actually we said uh, you find your niche you become a guru and then you give in order to receive yeah. according to my mission my vision these are the three most important factors that you should apply when applied well uh, will help you to reach any goal any business venture at all so how do you explain finding a niche or what was how you found your niche that helped you to reach this very well um, that is who you did say it uh, rightly that each and every one of us has opportunities and each and every one of us has some talent which he can develop indeed uh, to create a value as uh, we discussed earlier and let me just digress to the statement of the finance minister that indeed the government pay payroll is full. This is a fact. This is truth which was known long ago. It isn't only today. We only pretend that we could. But this is really the reality that is hitting us. I wish this message would go to those who are entering class one today. Wow. And that's going to be the fact till doomsday. This is going to be the fact until kingdom comes wow. that government cannot employ all of us. This truth, as you said it, you mentioned it clearly in this book, I wish uh, teachers and development uh, managers will recommend these books. In fact, I do recommend to all their students and their, uh, let me see, their apprentices as well. Because that is really the way to go. And this truth must be said to those who are studying today. So if you assume that when we go to school, we are going to learn some skills and develop our talent in order to establish ourselves. And the fact is also that not all of us can be entrepreneurs, of course, going by the exact definition. Because I want to establish a job to manufacture water. Everybody wants to do the same thing. Who work for who? Yeah. We just have to cooperate. So indeed, identify your needs or your talent or what you can make value from or produce value from. Uh, it's only necessary to say you have to be independent and be an employer alone alone but we can work together of course uh, today today i had uh, a minister at least on one of our radio stations uh, hinting that indeed um uh, it wasn't actually a minister a panelist i think he said the oil or the natural resources ghana has attracted for about 10 years is about a quarter of what Bill Gates, that is the chief executive for Microsoft Rights, yes. gets annually. Wow. So indeed, the wealth is not in the natural resources, but what? The talent, wow. the brain, wow. what your mind can make. Exactly. So you sitting down, hearing, to, okay, what should I do to be an entrepreneur? No, each and every of our, or one of us, as you have rightly mentioned, has a talent, has opportunity he can create. Today, the trend is that people are looking for natural food to eat. Gone were the days when you go for a party, everybody will ask for rice. Today it's changing, at least the occasion I have attended. If there's a Ghanaian food and that other food, most people would like to go for the Ghanaian food. And here we are, the busy, the business of today makes it virtually impossible for you to cook three times a day if you want to eat Ghanaian dishes. So how will somebody cook these Ghanaian dishes, package it very well, so that if I want, I can buy it at a premium. And people really want to enjoy that, they will buy it at a premium. How would they uh, purchase it? It's virtually unavailable, or unavailable. What we have is a roadside. It's unattractive. So if somebody can package this food so attractive and send it to various workplaces, I think it's a value. I haven't seen anything like that. I can do all that. But if people can come together to do this, it's fine. The same thing with vegetables. If a group can come together, you want for a quarter, or you want for the quarter, or somebody wants, has the skill to grow, vegetables or fruit you can come together and do it and i mean it's be profitable it's not all of us who can raise the capital to start a business but you have a talent i can contribute you can contribute and we'll make it together so one way or the other we are all entrepreneurs 
Indeed, the one who started Microsoft or Apple is not working alone. Perhaps the engineer working there is gaining something substantial because he has some skill to contribute. And that is what we should also hammer, not necessarily get money and start your own business. And so once you identify the niche, the niche is something you can do skillfully. Let me go down very well. Uh, this niche thing, we argue that oh, everybody can learn to do something. But indeed, that is not the case. The fact is that God has given the talent to some people in football, in sports. You can kick the ball, somebody can kick it differently. Better, yeah. to, better to get a result. Mm -hmm. Even uh, a sister or a female friend at home show me that indeed skills are different, naturally. He demonstrated by using a leaf uh, we, the Northerners and people of the Zongo descent used to cook. It's very bitter. She told me that yeah, some people can wash it once and the bitterness is off. Others will wash it four times, the bitterness will still remain. I argued. She demonstrated to me that indeed wow. that is the case. Wow. This shows that everybody has got some inbuilt skills which he or she can really uh, develop wow. for it to become his niche. And then once you identify that, I think you are on uh, for success. Yes. This work, as you said, identified the niche that I was quite skillful in it. Once I started, my boss introduced me to Bita Gotten, and well, it's all my interest, but I'm doing it, and I'm doing it well. So I have to perfect it. Mm. And lo and behold, I think it's turning out to be a success. Marshall, mm. Marshall. So in, 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 in actually, in explaining find your niche, uh, it's, it has to overlap with your talent. That's right. And you perfectly explain that through your explanation. So uh, finding niche, as you rightly mentioned, it does not necessarily mean that you start something from the ground. Well. You can be uh, what, a middleman That's right. to most of the inventions. Mm -hmm. Okay, You only have to learn how to do something faster, easier, quicker. That's right. So like you mentioned, if you can easily get these natural foods to people doorsteps, like the uh, well-established organizations, mm -hmm. you can get it for them at their doorstep, they will easily pay for it if they find it valuable. So I think you've, you've mentioned that rightly and it's beneficial. So um, we say from the finding your next point, before you can grow, become a guru. Oh. Even without mentioning becoming a guru, you've already explained. Oh. Because uh, becoming a guru has everything to do with learning, practicing, mm -hmm. and all that. You don't have to sit. Oh. You have to keep on practicing upon your talent. Mm -hmm. That is your gift. Oh. And that will take you, where you wherever you want to go. And then uh, the, the final point here is give in order to receive. What is given and what is receiving? And oh. how is it beneficial to us? In, oh. Yeah. Uh, that is uh, what the fact says, and we who live in the community of faith, we believe that there's blessing in giving than receiving. And that is fact. Uh, researchers have indicated that indeed those who give receive better. How and how the auntie was explained. We in the Islamic world, we know there's hadith of the Prophet where we say that every day there are two angels uh, who pray to Allah that whoever has given, may he receive again. And as if Allah has put some blessings on your shoulders. So when you stretch your hands and you give it out, there's more. Wow. When you don't stretch and you hold your hand, what will be there will remain. Probably it may even fall. That is what the truth is. And you don't have to really say, I don't have. Everybody has something. If you have to develop this, I think it's said that once you give something, you will receive something. Practically, let me give an example. Mm. There's a young person who is a millionaire, one of the rich people probably in his community today, if I have to say in the country. Um, I know he started by molding blocks, cement blocks we use in building. Mm -hmm. And he was doing it by the roadside. And one day, a certain rich man was passing by and he had a best tie. Mm. This rich man could not do anything to help himself. This young man who was molding the blocks helped him to change the tie. So when he finished, he tried to, the rich man tried to show appreciation by giving me something. He didn't take it. Here's a real story I'm telling you. Because I know the individual and I've worked for this rich man as well. Wow. So the rich rich man moved by. And then he came back. He said, ah, he hasn't seen a person like you before. He's giving you something, this offering you didn't take it. So no, at least you can give something. So he asked him, the work he's doing, is it his own work? 
He said, no, he's molding the blocks for somebody. He said, okay, if he has a contract to build about 100,000 blocks, can he do it? And lo and behold, that rich man was in the process of building a school. He built a very popular secondary school in the central region. All the blocks that were used to build the secondary school was molded by this individual. Masha. By the time he finished, he had built his own house. Masha. And then he went to construction. Today is one of the biggest contractors in this country. Allah. I know this story. People in the community say he has gone for what we call <laughs> spiritual money. Because they didn't know how this uneducated person molding blocks could suddenly turn into a rich man. Yes. So it's not everything you do to get. Mm -hmm. Immediate reward. If you have some labor, you can give it for free. Mm -hmm. Because how do you become a friend to a rich man mm -hmm. if you don't help him for free? Because if you have taken the money, probably he wouldn't greet you next time when he's even passing by. Exactly. But because you didn't take money for your service mm -hmm. at the first place, you have become his friend. Yes. Now he has trusted you. Whatever it is, he give you something. Of course. So this young man gave something free. Mm -hmm. and indeed, he has received this practically of someone exactly. after him. And it happens. Mm -hmm. in life. Of course. Once we help somebody, that is the way, that is the gateway. And that's one what Allah, God will bring somebody to, to help you. To help you. And, 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 and even by nature, by nature, naturally, people tend to be loyal and uh, want to give back once they've received something from you. Naturally, when people, uh, like, just like in the example you gave, the person did something for this rich man. That's right. It means he gave something. That's right. Okay. And naturally, naturally, mm. the rich man felt he has to return. He has to return. That's right. So it is nature. That's right. So even when the guy insisted not to collect something from the rich man, the rich man tried to come back, pay him, pay him. in a, in an alternative and more, much more better way. Absolutely. So but when he you took him out of his what we see his condition yes, to another condition. To another condition. So probably that's the need, that is a soft talent this person has. He has from a guru in that field. Now exactly. he's a guru. Yes. Or he has expertise exactly. in that field. Then he's now he's into contracts, contracts. construction. Then. By giving. By giving. Mashallah. By giving. That Mashallah. is the only way. Mashallah. Because there were many contractors by then. There were many people who had much expertise. But this rich man said, thought he could trust this individual wow. better to do the work he wanted. And then he connected to all his friends who are not living in the country. That if you want blocks for your building, I have somebody who is trusted. And Marshall. lo and behold, Marshall. that was the beginning of the business. Marshall, Doc, so we, are, we, are, blessing in giving. we are indeed we are indeed making progress. Mm. In fact, I, I don't think we have all the time in the world to go through everything. But then uh, before we close, there is something else I want us to look at. If you check uh, page 178 uh, yes, of okay, the book, I, it. I think... Uh, <clears throat> It states some differences between successful people and unsuccessful people right. per our definitions. That's right. Uh, we say that there are some qualities that successful people possess mm. that unsuccessful people do not have. Mm. But which, when those qualities are learned and applied by even those in the circle where we say they are not successful, mm -hmm. can also move to become successful that's, that's so true. i want us to look at this table here in my mission my vision of course it says the difference between millionaires and broke people mm -hmm. i.e successful people mm -hmm. and unsuccessful people in general we say successful people read daily mm -hmm. but unsuccessful people they watch tv daily mm -hmm. in line with what we discussed mm -hmm. earlier well, reading daily that's right what is your experience with that well i think reading has to do with acquisition of knowledge Today, there's no better way to account knowledge than to read. Yeah. And actually, as you are saying, poverty has some indices. They have some criteria. There are conditions that bring about poverty. Mm -hmm. And if you keep on doing that, you are going to be poor. And those who became rich or those who are rich, there are some conditions or some instances or certain things in society they didn't do. That's why they are rich. So if you do that, you also become rich. So daily reading means daily acquisition of knowledge. And knowledge is power, knowledge is value, knowledge is money, knowledge is worth. Oh. So if you read daily, it means it's money you are gathering daily. Mm. If you watch TV daily, what do you get? The one who you are watching on TV, if you have to watch TV daily, you wouldn't watch it. So you waste your time, you waste your talent, you spend money to watch TV that is unproductive. So that is poverty inducing habit because the TV will consume electricity. Mm -hmm. Something will break from it and you have to pay mm. in essence. It's a liability in your room once you're not acquiring knowledge from it. Once you're reading daily, whatever it is, it's not a liability. At least it will expand your brain. 
researchers in neuroscience have said that once you read daily, mm. the chances for you getting axiomia disease or other neurologic disease is limited. So reading does not only give you money, it gives you physical health. Wow. I know when you are falling sick, you are spending the money on treatment. The one mm. who is reading is not spending that much money. So I, I like this, I like this point. When reading, it also increases your health. It expands your this brain is, power. This is, this is it's, powerful. That is the food of the brain, and the brain is what carries the body. The only food you can give to the brain is daily reading. Once you read, in fact, research shows that the chances of you suffering some neurologic disease when you grow age, this disease that will let you forget, you begin, your body begins to shake here and there. Those are the symptoms of axemia and other neurologic diseases. You are less likely to get it. Check. Those who fall to axemia are mainly normally people who are not very well learned. Although they may, you can see some learned people also suffering that, but the probability is less in people who read daily than people who don't read. Wow. I think if I read uh, two pages, three pages a day, I'm going to increase that. Because um, I've been learning about you and getting close to you until this age, I have learned that uh, your one of your major interests is reading. Oh. You read a lot. And that is how come you even took the pain to read my book, even oh. though I was not uh, a known author. Because I, I, I understand I've given this book to other prominent persons in the community, and they think your background mm. cannot even allow them to encourage them to read your book. Why should I, mm -hmm. in my field or my standard mm. status, read your book mm. when you are uh, very much below mm. as the perception goes? So you reading my book and even many other books, and not just this book, mm. even I brought you a smaller book, which is um, Mobile Money. That's right. And even that, you read it. Well, and then you discuss with me shows that you like reading well, very much. And we, are, we, the young ones, will have to learn a lot from you. All right, so um, we say... Successful people set goals. That's right. Unsuccessful people do not set goals. What do you mean by goal setting? Very well. Uh, by goal setting, I think uh, once you look at the world, apart from the sun and the sky, those are things you come to meet that you wouldn't know how the Creator brought it about. Everything you can look at in the environment was created by something. And you can admire something that is beautiful, the road, the buildings, the glasses were specifically designed, that is goal setting. Somebody wanted to do it that way. That is life. We just don't live just like that. Human institution and human being yourself. If you just live, you don't plan, you don't set goals, you have no objective in life. You eat just like, excuse my language, our uh, co-fellows in the animal world. Wow. Bovines, you see like, let me see, farm animals, they are the ones who don't set goals mm -hmm. because their purpose is different. Yeah. So human beings, if you don't set goals, you and probably, excuse me, the farm animal, there's no much difference between you oh. because a human being must set a goal. And that's the only way you know whether you're on track or not. So goal setting is for you to discover something you want to do in life and then perceive it. Mm. Once you set the goal, then you begin to follow those who have done what you did, asking them how they did it, oh. and then you can follow their footsteps. By setting the goal, that is where you begin to acquire knowledge and the skill as to how you have to achieve that goal. Mm -hmm. But just living like that is not a human institution. Even the God did not create human being to be like that. Wow. And, and, and this is powerful. And I think uh, that is what kept you going when uh, you know, your friends wanted to stop you, they wanted to discourage you, well, but you were seeing something they didn't see. That is and correct. that was your goal. That is correct. And that was what kept you going. And for all leaders, what we call the gurus, business expertise, have that behavior and have that quality. They wow. set goals and they perceive it. Of course, mm. of course. So um, the next point is, um, they say successful people, mm -hmm. they like other views, mm -hmm. they compliment. When they see something productive, they support. They compliment, they give, you know, every support they have for it. But with the other side, the unsuccessful people, they criticize. Mm -hmm. What do you have to say on that? Very well, that is so. Just like, for example, I read your book, comment. Because even taking the time to write alone is an effort. How many person, how many people in our society have written a book? So regardless of your level, once I see it, I can compliment it. Okay, with this, and you have been able to do this one. MashaAllah, it's something good I have to comment. Just because that would be my attitude. And it's true, it's throughout uh, life, throughout my encounter with my client and everything else. We try to compliment rather than criticize. 
The unsuccessful people also criticize everything because of their criticism. They wouldn't want to do anything because they have the perception that whatever they do, somebody will criticize as well. So it makes them in it. They aren't, they aren't able to innovate, they aren't able to achieve anything. But fear of criticism. So it's a natural. Anybody who compliments will also want to do something because he expects that somebody also compliment him. Anyone who criticizes, those who criticize you don't want to read a book. Go and ask, probably they have not even written one page. A page. Though with all the information. All the information they have, they can't write a Mashallah. page. So that so Mashallah. Yeah. All right. Um, I think this is quite self-explanatory that successful people embrace change. And successful people, they fear change. That's so. Mm. Indeed, there's nothing constant in life. We keep changing. Mm -hmm. Some time back, we didn't have these mobile phones. If you have to communicate with somebody, uh, between, you have to communicate with somebody who is far away, you have, you have to travel there or write a letter. Mm -hmm. Today, there are telephones here and there. And many things are happening here. So all successful people indeed will have to embrace change. You don't have to fear change because nothing is constant. Mm -hmm. The food we eat today is changing. We have to change it too. Our business setting is changing. The way life itself is going, so many things are changing. So unless you change in accordance with the changing society, you will be left behind. And unsuccessful people want to maintain their traditions. If this is the way we met our forefathers doing it, mm -hmm. so we have to do it that way. They wouldn't change anything. Even to the extent that even their customs and culture, that is quite unproductive, but we are clinging to it. Mm -hmm. Instead of embracing change and become uh, productive. So that wow. is a fact we have seen. Wow. Mm. They say successful people forgive. And successful people hold grudges. Would that mean that when somebody infringes on your right, when somebody does something negative towards you, uh, you don't hold the person on? Or how do successful people deal with that, like forgiving or maybe holding grudges? Yes, what is a uh, fact is that. You see, we are living in society. If somebody commits an offense against the state, that is a crime, you report all right. But if it's a personal ill somebody has done against you, when you forgive, it's better. Because you have more time to do some other productive things rather than thinking about how you have to take revenge. Mm. In other words, when somebody does something against you and you forgive, please, you have uh, homeostasis. Scientifically, your heart is at ease. Wow. When you bear grudge, what happens is that any time you meet that individual, you're thinking of how to revenge, Adrenaline will increase your body, and once you have more adrenaline, your heart begins to pump. As it's pumping, it's hitting against the arteries and the blood vessels. They become harder. Very soon you have diabetes. Or, excuse me, very soon you have hypertension, because as the heart are hardening, they keep narrowing. Arterial sclerosis begin to develop. You begin to have hypertension, and you spend some money in hospitals. So that money will not make you suffer so because it's poverty-inducing habits. So rather, Bearing grudge against somebody is poverty inducing habit. Once you forgive, you are free. Wow. At least your mind is clear. You have time to do so many things and you don't have all bitterness in your heart. Your hypertension level goes down and so on and so forth. So, health wise, even forgiving is therapeutic. I think, this is, I think this is where if somebody argued that you, aren't, you weren't a doctor, like uh, the person might have gotten it wrong because <laughs> in your speech, or uh, in your, this presentation of this few points, we have seen a lot of, uh, you know, health talk, like mm. benefit from your field. Uh, we don't have all the time in the world, like I said. I think uh, this discussion will have to continue uh, some other time. In fact, we are, we are really happy having you on, on our show today. That is my mission, my vision talk show. For those of you who do not know the personality, he is the manager and... Uh, 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 the head of uh, the homeopath, he is an homeopath, okay, at the M Point, the Kumasi branch of M Point Homeopathic Clinic. And then, Masha Allah, we have learned quite a lot from him. We could not discuss all the points that we intended to, but we hope to bring him on the show uh, sooner or later. That, so, audience, you bear me that I will bring this man on board again for us to benefit a lot from his. Experience, but before we go, Doc, uh, your final statement on my mission, my vision, um, uh, in which can your your final statement on about my mission, my vision book to our audience? Very well, this book is very, very wonderful. I think it's inspiring. I recommend it to all uh, Ghanaian youth in particular, 
and the youth and the, the world in general. Um, it's very inspiring. Per, the person who has written it, if you look at his background and how he has had the inspiration to do this, the book will tell you a lot of things which you don't know. If you even know a lot, reading will still broaden your mind. So I think I recommend my vision, my mission, my vision to all. It's a must read. Thank you very much, Doctor. You're welcome. A pleasure.